Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin. And in today's video, I'm gonna answer some frequently asked questions. We're gonna do a parade of whips and I've got some news about the channel that you might be interested in. And I have a lot to say about it. So let's get started. So we're here in my living room and I would say it's a little more casual, except I have on a bright pink skirt. And I'll be honest with you, it's because I wanted to stay with the October is pink theme, and I don't really have a lot of pink clothes. <laughs> so, pink skirt it is. This setup that we have, this is just here in my living room on my couch, where I'm normally sitting right there doing hand stitching binding and every other thing breaking down shirts um is actually one of the ways that we do our videos for patreon so if you haven't toddled over to patreon to see what that's about uh, i do a monthly coffee chat for everyone that joins is, has access to that and it's just this it's me um sitting on my couch talking to you guys because we're all friends here about musings on whatever I'm working on and thrift store shirts and projects and all kinds of everything. Uh, but we have had some new people join us on the channel. So um, lots of new folks and I'm very glad to have you with me. And I thought it would be a great time to take it back a notch and um, just answer some questions that get asked a lot on the channel. And then I want to show you some things I'm working on kind of in a different way than the on my sewing room, um, on my, not on my sewing room, on my sewing table uh, because I was realizing I was feeling a little overwhelmed again and realized it's because I have quite a few things just still in the hopper. So I wanted to share those with you. Uh, and that's what our video is going to be today. So let's get started on the questions and the first one, and this one gets asked all the time, which is, do I only buy 100% cotton shirts? And the answer is, Mostly, yes. I really try to stay with cotton shirts, 100% cotton shirts if I can for so many reasons. But the short version is if I'm also using quilting cottons, which I do, um, those two 100% cottons work the best together. I don't have to worry about heavy pressing or starching or any of that with cotton poly blends. So that's that's that and that is probably the most often asked question so do i buy 100 percent cotton shirts yes yes i do um, the next question is do i pre-wash my quilting fabric since i'm using quilting cotton so fabric that i buy at the fabric store do i pre-wash those since the shirts that I use or the fabric that I use from shirts has already been washed and often dry cleaned and many times washed and washed and washed. And so therefore already shrunk what's what it's going to shrink. And the answer is no, I don't pre-wash. Now that would probably be really wise <laughs> because there is the risk that new fabric that has um, sometimes it has chemical treatment on it to hold the fabric color or whatever they do to make it nice and slick and soft. Um, sometimes they will shrink. Now we'll say linen does its own thing, whether it's been washed a million times or whether it's never been washed. And so it's kind of a, there's a gamble there because it does draw up and flannel does shrink but just regular old quilting cottons in my experience so far i have not had any difficulty i sew with them i mix them in with shirt fabric and i have not had any shrinking that has pulled my piecing out or made it warped or weird looking or so 
I guess because I haven't been bitten, <laughs> I don't pre-wash. And a lot of the quilting cottons that are available now, especially if you get really good quality fabric, it, it just is not going to draw up a lot anyway. So the answer to that is no, I do not pre-wash and no, I have not had any problems with it yet. If I were going to use linen from the store and flannel from the store, I would likely wash those first so that they would do what they're going to do and then I can sew with them. All right, next question. What do I do with the buttons from the shirts? And I want to answer this question with something delightful and creative. And you go, oh, I never thought of that. Or I want to hold up a project that I have used buttons in. And you think, oh, that is so beautiful. And want to do your own version of that. I, I want that so badly. But I will show you what I do with buttons. this. <laughs> this is what I do with the buttons. And sometimes I will do this <laughs> and put my hand down in there because it's like ASMR. It's, it's like therapy. It's like play therapy. If you ever saw the movie Amelie, she likes to stick her hands in the beans at the market. <laughs> That's what I feel like right now. And I did have them in a smaller jar and I had to upgrade them to a larger jar. And I suspect that before I come up with a new project, I'll have to go even larger than this. So yeah, I did have a jar of buttons that I poured into a Ziploc bag and took them to a coworker who is especially creative. And she uses a lot of non-traditional craft materials to make art. And I'll be honest with you, she didn't ask for them and she probably didn't want them. I kind of put them off on, off on her. Like, here, Sarah, do something with this. <laughs> so I'm trying not to do that anymore because maybe she didn't want a bag full of buttons. I'm cooking an idea about the buttons, but I haven't quite worked it out. So it's still in concept phase and I have no time to actually do prototypes. So that's just going to have to stay marinating for a little while. So the answer is I do nothing except for put them in a jar and periodically look over and go like, oh, look at those fun buttons. And that's about it. <laughs> so that's that. The next question, do I do anything with the seams from shirts that I cut from? So, you know, I take my big scissors on the spring loaded scissors and I cut around the bottom and up the sides and around the arm and it produces this just you know seam and it's all connected to each other and I don't really but I have heard that they are fantastic for using in your garden to tie up your plants that need to be tied to stakes. So tomato plants and pole beans and all kinds of pole beans. <laughs> that's such a Southern, I think that's a Southern phrase, pole beans. So they're very good for tying up vegetables. They do, um, is it disintegrate? What is that called? Degrade, they do degrade. So if you really don't like the thought of throwing them away, they can be put in your compost if they're 100% cotton. One of the patrons over on the Patreon community uh, messaged me and she actually took them to her local garden store and just said, hey, I have all these if anybody needs ties for their plants. And they were delighted, and I'm sure they are. And so find your gardener friends, if you are not a gardener, and give them to them. Uh, but I also wanted to show you uh, a really clever idea if you like to keep all your shirt pieces together. My friend Jennifer does this, and then it turns out that Heike, who is uh, one of our YouTube viewers and a friend, we did a shirt trade and so she sent me some shirts that she had already broken down and look at this. I think this is just, that's a whole shirt. So she made a little packet of it, including the collar, which is really neat. Oh, and it's knotted, so I'm going to have a hard time showing you. But anyway, this is the 
this is the bottom so like the hem of the shirt and then also the side seams and the one that, the big long one that's connected she just tied the shirt up in this neat little package so if you like to keep all of your shirt pieces together um, in your fabric stash or if you have a shirt stash and you like it all together then so she just has everything so there's cuffs here's the collar and she just tied it up like a um, what am I trying to say? Like a package, <laughs> like a gift. Sorry, my mind went off into s the sound of music when she says brown paper packages tied up with string. These are a few of my th favorite things. I really want to break into song right now, but I just did that on the last video. I'm not sure you guys want to hear me sing again, but that's, that's what that looked like to me. And so here's the, here's that. I was thinking the other day that I had remembered seeing somewhere that you can make rag rugs with your scraps, with your scraps from your quilting. And I racked my brain and I remembered that there was something in my um, Sunday morning quilts book. I promise you this book, I do read other books. <laughs> I do read other quilting books. This book is such a resource. Amanda Jean Nyberg included a kind of brief tutorial on how to make a rag rug with your skinny strips of scraps, which I don't have a lot of, but it just kind of jogged something in my mind. And so I pulled out my knitting needles. What did I do with my other knitting needle? Well, I was going to show, oh, it's right there on the table. Tadgummit. So I took those seams from, you can see, from one of those pink shirts that was hanging behind me, a blue shirt that Heike sent me, a white shirt, and then another pale pink and white shirt that I did, and I just knitted them together. And I really didn't even sew them together. Like when I went to the next shirt type, I just did that invisible knot where you, you know, you do the loop over and the loop under, and then you just slide it like that to make it knot. And I gotta tell you, I kinda like it. I hope you can see it. So I'm just making a little mini version. I think this is gonna end up being a trivet. And I just did garter stitch, uh, which I think is far easier than trying to do um, a herringbone or anything complicated because you've got that edge of where the seam is. So if you decide to do this, which I encourage you to do this because it's actually really fun and it feels very redeeming of these pieces. They don't go nearly as far as you'd think they'd go. And so I may be working on this forever, but I, I just, it's kind of nubby and I don't know. And it's 100% cotton. So I could throw this in the wash and even maybe bleach it and it would be fine. So if you were looking for something to do with your seams and you're a knitter, don't know if it would work with crochet. I don't think so but I'm not much of a crocheter. So anyway, so that's the answer to that question, which brings me to my next question. Uh, what do you do with the cuffs, collars, and yokes? And I wanna show you what I do with my cuffs, collars, and yokes. But you have to sit right here and wait just for a second. This is what I do with my cuffs and collars and some of my yokes. I will tell you, someone early on when I started doing this on YouTube was like, oh, don't throw, because I throw the, I used to throw the cuffs away and the collars. Oh, don't throw the cuffs and collars away. You can make. And so I started saving them and I have been saving them. I mean, I just have, you just wouldn't believe everything that's in this bag. And I have been saving them and I have no idea. <laughs> the person who suggested that I keep them, she keeps hers and makes um, dog collars out of them, or I guess dog collars and various little, you know, cutesy things for her fur baby. I save them because a lot of times I really like this fabric but then I kind of don't know what to do with them. I saw where you can make a koozie, coffee cup, 
koozie with them. And I actually really seriously considered making a pattern for one of those and, and really wanted to do that last year for Christmas, um, make them. They don't really fit exactly uh, because if you have a latte cup, they, it needs to be angled. Uh, so there's some finagling to do if you do that, or you can you know, put a tie on it and just tie it up. After a lot of consideration, I just was like, mm, I don't know. So I have a whole bag of them. If, if one of you out there <laughs> really, really loves the collars and cuffs, um, yeah, I have a whole bag here that I might be willing to send to you. Um, I will say with collars in particular, sometimes you can get really interesting fabrics out of them that are very different from the shirt itself. I do take these out and I use them. Uh, I've mentioned many, many times about my love for denim and flower shirts. They very often have wonderful details in the collars and I use them to tie packages. Not that I'm doing a lot of package tying, but I do, I save them, I save the ribbons, I, sa I save the details on the placket, and I will, I'll just like, I mean, almost like Heike did with this shirt, if this is a package, then I just, you know, do the little and tie a bow on it. And it's just, it's a nice detail. Um, it's not super fancy, but I kind of like that. It does feel very useful. So I save them and then if you've been with me for a while, you know that the yokes and some of the better pieces from the collars and cuffs can be redeemed and used in scrappy blocks. So I'm making these Quilty Stars blocks. I, this is going to be on the channel for the next five years, I'm convinced. But the yokes of the shirt really works beautifully in those triangles and these pieces, these little squares around that navy center square are about two inches, which is enough. You can get that from both a collar and a cuff if you don't have interfacing in your cuff. So to that point, <laughs> navy blocks, fabric in consideration, navy blocks, fabric. So these are all collars and cuffs and parts of sleeves that I'm considering for more navy blocks. And so that's what I do with the yokes and collars in particular. Cuffs can get kind of dicey. It really depends on how stiff the interfacing is and if you want to try to really work to get them apart. Sometimes it's not worth, worth the work. Um, so anyway, so that's that. Now that we're here, now that I showed you, this is one of my mini whips. You can see the stack. Let me move this stuff and then we'll zip through those real quick. There is nothing as encouraging and discouraging as going through your pile of whips. I have to do this periodically so I can just remember what I've got, remember where I'm going, maybe start trying to tick some things off the list. Obviously I have shown you these both before and now. So we'll put that in the, this is my whip basket. If you're very, very, very new to quilting or don't quilt at all, whip is work in progress. And I have a lot of <laughs> works in progress. Here's another one, which we have talked about a lot on my sewing table. This will be my daughter's graduation quilt. I won't go through that uh, greatly. And then one that is barely in progress is the flying geese quilt that I'm going to be doing with these glorious K facet fabrics and some shirt fabrics. So you've seen that on my sewing table as well. And then you may have forgot, have you forgotten these? I have not <laughs> forgotten these. These are my linen, um, obviously curved seam blocks. And what's so sad when I went through my wet pile, I have fabric already cut, like it's ready to go in my little baggie right here. And I just need to sit my 
Fanny down. Oh, my apologies to the Aussies and Brits for that work. I need to sit my butt down at the sewing table and actually make some more of these. But this is a long range project. I have the Celestial Stripes quilt top done for my friend who's having a baby boy. This is a baby quilt. And I have to pick the backing. And it's funny about picking backing. Sometimes it just comes to me and sometimes I really have to mull over it. And I've just about decided on a color palette but then I've got to find the fabric. I have this wonderful, this is a Moda Bella Solids, um, what is this color card really, except it's fabric. And so I just kind of, sometimes if I'm needing inspiration or wondering what I want to put with, I'll get it out and hold it up against. And I decided, now this is a little bit loud, so I won't go quite this loud, but for the back, kind of in that vermilion, I think there's one on here called Mango that I really like that it's, you know, it's kind of in that orange red family and it just will give it a really nice pop of color. So that's coming, but I have not quite landed yet and honestly have not made the space to think about it. Same with this one. Remember my K facet? quilt top. I love it. And I have no idea what to put on the back. I had pulled this yellow sheet that I got from the thrift store thinking that that might work. And now that I've had it out for a little bit, I'm not sold on it. I'm just, I don't know. If you have an opinion about that, by the way, feel free to comment like, yes, I like the better or yeah, definitely not. I'm kind of starting to think that maybe a darker background, uh, not background, backing. So like a charcoal gray. But anyway, that's in consideration. So I've got two things just in like, what do I want to put on the back of this? And then you may have forgotten this one. I have not, which is my Magnolia quilt that I still need to quilt. And really, I probably shouldn't say should have because life is just, sometimes you don't get to do the shoulds. But once I get this super scrappy Mark Rothko quilt done, I think I'm just going to leave my walking foot on my sewing machine and start making some progress on this guy, which is still, gosh, I love that plaid. It's so beautiful. This one, you may have totally forgotten. I had totally forgotten it, actually, until I pulled these out. This was that I made jelly roll strips out of a shirt to see how much it made and worked on this for some time. And I have it all the way done. All the way, the quilt, is, quilt top is all the way done. I have the batting cut and I have the backing. Oh, and look, let me show you the backing on that. I ran that pretty strip right down the, well, in the two thirds mark actually. So my wonderful local quilt store, which I keep talking about, obviously I'm still not over it. They were also my long arm quilter and they have closed. And so those long arm services through my quilt store are not available. And my friend Sissy, who has quilted things for me just out of the goodness of her heart, you know, believe it or not, has a life and can't just quilt a gigantic quilt at a moment's notice. And my friend Kyle, who I'm probably going to call him this week and say, Hey, do you feel like taking on one of these projects? He long arms on the side. So I'm, I don't often feel like I should call him <laughs> and be like, Hey, I have this project and I really need it like now. Um, so if you are a long armor, <laughs> moral of the story, if you're a professional long armor and you are interested in doing some long arm quilting for me, you can email me at, um, my email is Kathy, C-A-T-H-Y, at thecatbirdquilts.com. Or if you just know someone that's really great, that you feel confident in their work and would like to recommend them, you can put that in the comment section. So you can email me or comment below, or you can always Instagram message me if you're an Instagrammer. So, and then last but not least is, 
it's nearly Christmas again and I still have my Christmas quilt that isn't quilted yet. I mean, it's all done, like it's here, it's, it's done. So the top is done, the back is put together. I even have the binding and so I have no excuse, <laughs> but I need to find, find somebody. So I think the going through whips, like I knew I had these projects, but there was something about realizing, okay, this is what needs to be done for this project to move it to the next place. This is what needs to be done for this project to move it to the next place. So those are my whips. And since we have our little Christmas quilt and binding, that reminds me a little piece of news. As we did last year, the Catbird Quilts team, that's me and my husband, Paul, we are gonna take a break in December. We're gonna do no videos in the month of December to be able to enjoy our family and our own hobbies. I'll probably still do more quilting, just no quilting for the channel. And just take a break and come back in January. So over the next, I guess the rest of this month and in November, we may talk about some Christmas projects, but no videos come December. So not that you needed to mark your calendars, but, <laughs> but we won't be here if you come looking for us. I, I think I need to create a new TLA, which is three letter acronym for works in progress that aren't, I don't know if they're not in progress or if they're not works. So maybe it's a WIC work in concept or maybe it's a SIP concept in progress. <laughs> so I have my, I do have this little whip, which is finishing up my mug rugs. I've got to do all the finishing on it. But I have this stack of pink two and a half inch squares that isn't even a project yet, but it is a concept. So, and those give me life. I love it. So that's, that's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed being with me, kind of chill, hanging out here in my living room. If you did enjoy this video and you want to check us out on Patreon, it is exactly what you would think, which is the Catbird Quilts on Patreon. And there are a couple of different tiers you can join. You can join as a free member. I don't do a lot of free things there. Um, a, the occasional sneak peek of something I'm doing for the channel or maybe a little behind the scenes, but mostly we treat our YouTube, our YouTube channel is our free content. Uh, but we welcome you over on Patreon if you want to join us. And I hope I've answered your, the frequently asked questions that maybe you hadn't asked. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks for being with me today. I'm Kathy Martin, and this is the Catbird Quilts.